Hello, everyone. My name is Bert Chanarad. I'm the principal investigator for the study in, entitled Predicting Trend in Hypertension for Black and White Healthcare Workers. According to the inverse hazard law, the exposure to occupational health risks is inversely linked to the power of the workers, which are, has a strong tie to the worker's occupational status. High status worker are those with high education and high skills. They receive a high wage and can muster resources to avoid exposure to occupational hazard. They also face lower risk of job loss and are less likely to lose access to health promoting resources compared to low status workers. Although high status worker tend to have higher job demand, their job tend to also offer high level of control over what they do, how they do it, and when they do it, which further minimize work-related stress that could have negatively affect the worker's blood pressure. Um, this figure showed the percentage distribution of the four classes of worker, healthcare workers for the black and white workforces based on the American Community Surveys. The higher occupational class are situated higher on the stack bar chart. And the left one is for the black healthcare workforce and the right one is for the white healthcare workforce. So you may see that disproportionate percentage of the white workforce have high status occupations, while more than three fourths of the black workforce have low status occupations. So the implication of this is that black, black healthcare workers are systematically facing higher occupational health risks than white workers. So our study asked what would happen to the ratio inequity in hypertension if the ability to access job in all occupational classes and occupational advantages for black are similar to those afforded to the white healthcare workers. A project has two phases. In phase one, we create a micro simulation that track hypertension status of 1 million black and 1 million white healthcare workers in a racially segregated environment. And this is our control model. We follow a cohort this cohort from age 25 to 65, so for 40 year in total. And after all the worker reach age 65 or die along the way, our model calculate the prevalence of hypertension among a live worker at each age, as well as examine the 40 year trend for the white and black workforce separately. In phase two, we modify the structure of our model to get rid of the force of structural racism and structural sexism that drive occupational segregation for black and white and also for men and women. And finally, we compare the prevalence of hypertension under this experimental condition to what we observed earlier in the control condition to determine the potential impact of workforce desegregation. So uh, in our control simulation, the healthcare workers are selected into one of the four occupational classes based on the, the probability estimated from the American Community Surveys. In the figure on the left, the teal line is the prevalence of hypertension for the black workforce and the salmon color line is for the white workforce. And the prevalence of hypertension averaging over 40 years for the White workforce is 14.3, two percentage, two percentage point lower than the average pre prevalence for the black workforce. Under the counterfactual scenario, uh, we allow, in case D, we allow black men to have the same access to occupation as white men and black women to have access to occupation as white women. And for case E, everyone, regardless of their race and gender, have the same access to occupation as white men. So we found evidence that uh, the, the workforce desegregation reduced hypertension inequity between the black and white 
healthcare workforce. So this finding suggests that uh, policy like diversity, equity, and inclusion policy, which are designed to primarily change the composition of the workforce to better reflect the community that the healthcare workers serve can also improve the health of the workers themselves. And the manuscript for this study is currently under review. And we want to mention that this, the finding from this pilot study will be a foundation for our plan NIH application for the R01 uh, using simulate, I think it was called using uh, simulation to study uh, health disparity, something along that line. Uh, we're hoping to submit that grant application in 2023. Thank you. Thank you.